race course, competitors in the National Senior Cross Country Championship get away to a wet start. Rain, wind and mud make the six and a quarter mile journey heavy going. Leading the field from the start is Nelson of Otago, who plows on steadily with the west coast of Wells not far behind him. It's a team's race as well, and teams from Otago, Canterbury, Wellington, West Coast, Auckland and Hawke's Bay are in the running. Coming up the hill and down the other side reminds us that the higher up the mountain, the greener grows the grass. And down comes a harrier, and it's W.H. Nelson of Otago coming in 260 yards ahead of Wells to win the national title in 37 minutes, 7 seconds. The team's race went to Otago. The Tamahini, clearing Queen Charlotte Sound for Wellington, only 25 miles away, is seen by the watchers at the lookout for New Zealand's only remaining whaling station. The narrow strait, a busy waterway for shipping, is also used by whales during the winter months in their northward migration. Far below, across the bay, is the tug Tuatiri, the mother ship to the chasers, and near her float the whales she has brought in, waiting to be cut up and rendered down for oil. A 40 to 50 ton whale can provide up to six tons of oil, which today has reached a record price. Originally used for lighting and lubrication, whale oil is now a valuable ingredient for foodstuffs and soap. One of its most important uses being in making margarine. Britain's foresight in purchasing all the available whale oil before the war did much to maintain her health and fighting power. This whaling station received assistance in priorities and in being able to use radio during wartime to maintain the supply. Today the need continues. Whales are worth several hundred pounds each and their importance is world news. A side industry is the canning of whale steaks for the eastern markets. Coarser in texture but tasting like prime beef, whale steaks are palatable and nourishing food. A cannery at Picton is handling many tons. But the most romanticized part of whaling is the catching. In their high lookout, the watchers patiently search the straits for the whales that pass through on their annual migration north. Slowly the ocean is traversed by the powerful binoculars. Whales must come up to breathe every 20 minutes, and then they blow the air from their lungs with great force, sending a column of spray high in the air. Hence the cry, there she blows, that has been used for centuries. Some of these men are descended from the whalers who were in New Zealand 50 years before the Treaty of Waitangi. Today, whaling has changed. They have swift motorboats, powerful binoculars, radio telephones, and harpoon guns. But there is the same danger, the same excitement of the chase, when they call... There she blows! The flag is a signal to the Tuatiri to get underway and tune in her radio. Legs up. The flag's up, Charlie. The ship, the shore lookout, and the chasers are all linked by radio telephone. The crews of the three chasers start down the hill to the fast little speedboats anchored below. Tuatiri is already passing through the Tory Channel by the time the chasers are underway. Capable of over 30 knots, their slim light hulls strong enough to stand up to heavy seas, these chasers are unique in the world. Nowhere else do they hunt whales from shore-based speedboats. There she blows. For less than a minute, the whale is seen. 
and then there's the whole straits to search in. The chasers race up when the whale shows again, but not quickly enough. They have the ocean to search in again, and this may go on for hours. By the radio link, watchers on the mothership and the shore also report to the chasers. There she blows! As the tiny boats roar out, the gunner is tense and ready. He has time for just one shot. The deadly harpoon with its explosive head goes home and the whale sounds. The line must be paid out, other harpoons thrown to make the kill as quickly as possible. Great care must be taken that the huge creature doesn't throw the boat in the air or smash it with its tail flukes. As the whale dies, it is quickly blown up with compressed air to stop its sinking, and the mothership comes to take over. Chaser speeds away, the tuatiri starts the tow back to the factory. Another notch on the chair, then searching the seas again from daylight to dark for the whales, following the invisible paths they've travelled for thousands of years.